In this video, we are going to look at the start recording, stop recording, and play recording buttons. And to get those to work, we are going to need to look at the Media Stream Recording API. Uh, it goes by a couple different names. I know it as the Media Recorder API. But they say here that it is closely affiliated with the Media Capture Stream API and the WebRTC API. So if you haven't used it before, you're not familiar with how this works, the way MDN docs are organized is up at the top here. Web API is at the top of the hierarchy, and this falls underneath it. WebRTC is a peer. It's also considered a web API. The Media Capture and Streams API is also a web API. Media Stream, which we have interacted with a lot, is strictly speaking not part of the WebRTC API. And the reason for that is because Get User Media creates it. So you kind of can't do anything in WebRTC without this thing. But since these other two can use it as well, they have kept them separately. And, and we will use these, I, I believe, at some point in the course. But I think of the Media Stream uh, Recording API as almost as part of WebRTC. Either way, I use it all the time. And like I said, it's meant to work with something that generates a media stream, which is precisely what we are doing. If we come back over to scripts up at the top here, that's exactly what our stream variable is. Line 11, we fetch a stream from get user media. So we've, we worked with this a lot and there's a ton of stuff here. This is another API that you can get lost in if, if you really want to. But uh, under basic concepts here, it says the, this API is comprised of a single major interface, the media recorder. So you click on that, you can read about this stuff. The constructor is what we are interested in, Media Recorder. You hand Media Recorder a stream. And if we scroll down here, the stream is a media stream that will be recorded, which is what Get User Media is kicking out. Okay, so let's come over here and let's create a new file because there's going to be a lot going on here. We'll call this screenrecorder.js. We'll go over this in more detail uh, later on. We're going to do a project where we do a screen recorder in React, and that'll be an opportunity to talk a little bit more about it. Before we get any further, let's go back over to Index and let's import this script. So we'll have screen recorder. And then uh, if we scroll up a little bit here, we have a start, record, a stop, and a play. So we're going to need to add those listeners. So let's come over to scripts, come to the very bottom here. And let's get those set up. So it will look like this. And we'll change this from change video side to start recording. I'm going to copy this, this whole line here. And I'm going to paste it in twice. And we'll change this to stop. And then play. I think it was play record. Yeah. So we got start, stop, and play record, listeners. We got start recording. We will have stop recording and we will have play recording. And all of those functions are going to live in the screenrecorder.js file. Okay, so let's come over and get those set up. So we'll have a const, call it start recording, is a function, and we can put a sanity check in there just to make sure that this is working. Start recording, I'm gonna copy this one, and we'll have a stop recording, and then lastly, we will have a play recording. We'll hit these one at a time, so don't. Ho hopefully you're not feeling overwhelmed, but just want to make sure that everything works here. So once you've got this, let's come back over. Let's refresh, start things up. Actually, I guess we don't technically need to do that. A little bit quick on the draw there. Okay, so we'll do start recording, mine works, stop works, and play works. Okay, so we're in good shape, uh, or at least I am. So if, if you need to pause me to catch up, get this working. To create a new media recorder, we'll do const, we'll call it media recorder is going to be a new media recorder. So we're invoking the constructor and then we have to pass it a stream. You can also pass it some options. As I said, we'll look at this a little bit later. So let me, uh, let me come down here to the parameters. Options is a dictionary object that contains the following properties. So mime type, if, if this is your thing and you want to, and you want to pass in specifically an MP4, you can, you can actually go one further and actually choose the codec that you want. Uh, we're not going to worry about this. There's other stuff like audio bits per second video and so on. Um, the only thing we, we need to pass in though is a stream. And if we don't pass this in, it says the browser will select its preferred codec for audio and or video. So we don't have to do that. The browser will just pick whatever it chooses or thinks is best, which is just fine for now. So what do we, what do we actually do with this thing? Welcome back over to the docs here. 
scroll down to the instance events and the instance methods. Um, these are pretty straightforward. This is exactly what you'd expect out of a out of a video player or recorder. Start recording, stop recording, resume if you pause, and then you can request data. Well, in terms of what we're going to want to do, we're going to want to interact with the data available event. And this thing fires whenever the media record has media to deliver to your application. It comes in the form of a blob that contains the data. We don't have to interact with the blob, so don't worry about it. But really, this event is going to fire one of four times because the stream ends for some reason and there's stuff left over and it will send it over. If we call stop, that's usually going to be when this runs. If we specifically say, hey, I want some data, that was the one we saw on the last page, request data. Or if you have set, if you've set something up like to, for it to fire at, at a certain interval, and that may be the case, but for our purposes, it's just going to be on stop. So let's come back over and we're going to set up a variable at the top here. We'll call it recorded blobs, and that's going to be an array. And we will, we will build an array of blobs. We'll do media recorder dot, and let's come back over and take a look uh, down below here. In typical JavaScript syntax, it's on and then the name of the event. So it's on data available like that. So we'll drop that in. We will get the event back. And then we, uh, we're going to run this callback where let's console.log data is available for the media recorder. Okay. And then uh, more specifically, we're going to take recorded blobs and we're going to push on it e.data. So E is the event, so it's the object that happens on this event. And we're going to grab its data property and push uh, push it on. So we need to run media recorder dot start open close, and then we can test it out. Let's make a few uh, let's make a few comments here though. Uh, so we'll have uh, a comment here. We'll say an array to hold the blobs for playback. All right, line five. Make a media recorder from the constructor and then this one will probably be a little more useful than the last two on data available will run when the stream ends or stopped or we specifically ask for it okay again line 11 is actually going to start the feed and if the documentation is accurate this is not going to do uh, really anything uh, it will say start recording, but we don't know if anything is ever going to happen because there's no way for it to stop. And that's the only time on data available is going to run. So let's handle that. Uh, we got inside of stop recording here. We need to do media recorder dot stop open close. The catch though is up on line five. We, we made it a local variable. So I'm going to remove const and at the very top, we will define media recorder and we won't actually assign it to anything, but Line six, we can overwrite that. And then when stop recording gets called, we can actually run the stop method against it. So again, if, if we're reading the documentation correctly, when stop runs, this event should fire and line nine will run. So let's refresh again, give it one more try, show, start, clear everything out, stop. And there we go. <laughs> we got data is available for the media recorder. So that is very exciting. What do we do with it? Well, this part is going to be pretty straightforward in terms of playing a, a video from a blob. But down here in uh, play recording, we're going to make a variable called super buffer. And that's going to be a new blob. And we're going to hand it recorded blobs. But once again, <laughs> line five here, we defined it as a local variable and we won't have access to it in that, uh, in that function. We need to change its scope. So we'll do let recorded blobs up here. Again, we don't need to assign it. It will get overwritten on line six, pushed on line 11 inside of our event, which will occur on line 19 stop. So super buffer is going to be a new blob from this array. And you could specify the MIME type that you want it to be, uh, you want it to be exported as. Uh, we are not going to. Super buffer is a super buffer of our array of blobs. Okay. So it's not a buffer. It's a super buffer. <laughs> uh, we'll make it constant. We'll call it recorded video element. 
and we're going to go out using document.query selector, grab the thing with the ID of, well, we haven't used this, I don't think yet. Let's scroll, actually, it's at the bottom here, other video. So we're going to, we're playing our feed here. We're going to play their feed. Strictly speaking, it's not their feed, it's the recorded feed, but that is fine because this is just uh, to learn. So we've got other video here. We're going to take that element, we're going to set its SRC object equal to we need to use window.url.createObjectURL and hand it our super buffer, okay? You can go chase this down. We don't need to talk about it here, but we just we need to make a stream that the video object can, can read from. SRC object, though, hopefully you remember that back over here in scripts. Uh, it's back up here in show my feed. We set the SRC object to the stream. In this case, it's not quite so straightforward because we don't have a stream. What we have is a bunch of chunks. We're usually only going to have one because we just start and we stop it. But the way the API works is well, we, we have to create a URL from the blob because we're not dealing with a stream uh, at this point. Okay, you can add a couple niceties on there where we can do recorded video L dot controls equals true so that you can hit play and mute and so on. Uh, finally, though, we need to do dot play open close. So this is our video tag, right? That's what we're interacting with now, not the media recorder anymore. Hit save, and we should have a pretty good chance of this working, I think. So we'll show, it is going slow. There we go, let's start. Some crazy things happen, we wanna record, stop, play, and, oh dear. <laughs> so, I talked uh, I talked us right through it. Um, I set the SRC object here, because that's what we did over here, uh, which is, where's that at? Right here in show my feed, we set SRC object to stream because we're working with the stream. And it's telling us right here, um, you didn't give me a stream. I, as I mentioned, is exactly what I just said. We're not giving it a stream. We're giving it an object URL. So instead of SRC object, this should be SRC. Let's try that again. Share, allow, show, start recording. Again, some really awesome things happen. We stop. Moment of truth, play, <laughs> there we go. Okay, you can rewind and play and mute uh, and just about everything that you've got to work with. So, all right, so that's a, that's a wrap for now. We will come back to this, uh, this concept later on where we'll make a screen recorder with React, but great job. I'll see you in the next video.